Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You, the show that makes neighbours look like an Australian soap opera. On the news this week, in protest at the massive arms reduction announced by Mikhail Gorbachev, Soviet soldiers attempt to commit suicide with the only weapons still available. Sport, and after their defeat by Western Samoa in the Rugby World Cup, Wales take on an MFI soft furnishing display. <laughs> and finally, the shamed Marquis of Blandford, on bail while he appeals against his jail sentence, announces he's found a steady job as a minicab driver. <laughs> As usual, we have four wacky japesters ready at a moment's notice to roundly abuse a variety of much-loved public figures. Uh, firstly, on Ian Hislop's team, someone who is about to embark on seven weeks of s and I should explain that's the title of his new series, as well as his hobby, Tony Slattery. <laughs> And to my left, on Paul Merton's team this week, television critic for the Mail on Sunday, and therefore the most charming, intelligent, and overall attractive man I've ever had the <laughs> of introducing Alan Corrin. <laughs> so let's sweep majestically into round one. Four bits of news footage to identify. Ian and Tony, what's this quiet family affair? Oh, this is, this is that wedding, isn't it? Although, no, this was chiefly no uh, notable for a, s a fleet of stretch limousines to carry Larry Fortensky's chins. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And a bit of added information is that Larry's hairdresser is the same as that of DJ Pat Sharp. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yes, they, they both go to a hairdresser's called Shea Crap. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have any points for that, but you can have two points for getting the answer right, anyway. Yes, it's the barrage of uh, reporters at Liz Taylor's wedding to Larry Fortensky, an alcoholic bulldozer driver. Not sure, <laughs> how, not sure how many alcoholic bulldozers there are to drive, but uh, he drives one. Now, Liz Taylor was uh, brought to the altar by Michael Jackson, although he was a touch miffed that his chimpanzee Bubbles wasn't allowed to give her away. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? <laughs> so it would have gone. Larry himself described Liz as evergreen, presumably because you can tell her age by counting the rings. <laughs> Paul and Alan, um, where's, uh, where's this heading for? King's Cross. <laughs> it's actually heading for disaster. What it is, it's a, it's a Hornby Dublo outfit. It's all that's left after Malcolm Rifkin to spend all his money on deciding <laughs> where the railway should go and then changing it again. Mm. And the rest of it's gone on the tunnel and all they have is this very, very small road <laughs> to go from London to Calais. Which, yeah, is, which is coming out near King's Cross, is it not? It I think is. it's going through so the Labour constituency now as opposed to the Tory one in Kent. So, you, Well, if it goes to King's Cross, it'll cut down on curb calling because you get the train home, couldn't you? <laughs> British Rail has already bought £100 million worth of suburban property covering the length of the original route. As a result, a spokesman for British Rail said they would now be opening an extremely long, thin golf course. <laughs> uh, Ian and Tony, what's this uh, uncivil row about? Oh, well, that, that's clearly some old git. <laughs> <laughs> Patience waiting over. That's an incredibly long queue. Uh, this is William Waldegrave, who's clearly a toff and he's never been in a casualty department. As well. <laughs> he's just frightening two patients. <laughs> Well, he probably thought they were consultants. He's never been in there. Saying, what are you doing here? <laughs> yes. Why don't you try Booper? It's much quicker. <laughs> now, that was an awful row this week because uh, there was a suggestion that John Major was trying to privatise the health service, which is Waldegrave's job. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> Tory's very upset about that. Fighting over and it's shit. not pronounced uh, Waldegrave. Isn't it? No, it's pronounced... Pratt. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. He has actually changed the pronunciation of his name three times, from uh, Waldgrave to Waldegrave, and now it's apparently he likes to be called Waldgrave, which is sort of halfway in front of the <laughs> This is what the BBC pronunciation unit told us. Uh, the man at uh, the start of the film was Duncan Nicholl, uh, the, the NHS chief executive, who publicly stated that uh, Labour claims of backdoor privatisation were not true, and Labour in turn have claimed that he's politically biased. Not that it's for uh, this program to take sides. Conservative MPs have every right as human beings to cover up the cynical erosion of the NHS by <laughs> 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 
And uh, Labour MPs have every right to tell whoppers about it. <laughs> and finally in this round, uh, Paul and Alan, what are these elaborate preparations for? Oh, yes, that's another national health operation, yes. I think. <laughs> uh, you can have it done in Dewhurst window. Oh, yes, yes, this is the, Albert, the Royal Albert Hall for the uh, first basho, I think it's called, to be held outside of Japan in one and a half thousand years or something. And basho is the Japanese for Robert Maxwell look-alike competition. <laughs> I thought it was your favourite subject. <laughs> I thought it was one of the Marx Brothers basho, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixing it up with sumo. sumo. He was sumo. With him. <laughs> Apparently the Japanese are offended that we don't appreciate the spirituality of the sport. Quite how spiritual it is for a 17 stone fat man to lurch about trying to knock around uh, other people in a confined space. I don't know. <laughs> certainly wasn't very spiritual when Oliver Reed did it on After Dark. <laughs> Which, uh, which stoutest remark uh, brings us to the end of round one, at which point, uh, as you can now see, with the aid of our gleaming new scoreboard, good old BBC, <laughs> no expense spent. <laughs> uh, both teams, in fact, have equal points. Paul and Alan have four, and Ian and Tony have a sumptuous four also. Well, before we glide gracefully into the second round, it's time to pause briefly as we throw up two intriguing images uh, recently appearing in the news. Paul and Alan, here's yours. Ian and Tony, will you look at this? <laughs> and between now and the end of the programme, you're contractually obliged to come up with a, a scathingly amusing caption or your residuals will be axed. <laughs> so, let's immerse ourselves in the grisly world of tabloid headlines. One grim tale each to identify. Paul, here's yours. Don't put this in the shredder. Um, I think it's uh, Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, isn't it? She, she's been, she gets love letters from, princess, from Princess Andrew, I nearly said. That'd be a, <laughs> that'd be a royal scoop, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Prince, she gets love letters from Prince Andrew, which he reads and immediately puts in the shredder. Yes. Yes, that's very so romantic, isn't yes. it? Yes. Well, she's all heart, that woman. Yes. Uh, apparently, Fergie finds his letters rather embarrassing. I can't believe the spelling's that bad, but... <laughs> There's also been disagreement between them this week over the interior decor of their five million pound home. Uh, Fergie's design included a bright pink drawing room, bright pink canopied bed, wall-to-wall -wall tartan carpet throughout, and a toilet seat that plays the national anthem. <laughs> Just as well for the royal family, they don't have to stand to attention when it plays. <laughs> Alan, uh, here's a curious scenario for you. Holler in the wall saves two bank girls. I, it, it, it's one of those for people who are confounded by technology. You believe you press those buttons and money comes out automatically. In fact, two girls stand behind it and shove it through. <laughs> what happened in this story yeah, is right. that two That's... girls were locked in a bank vault and were saved by shouting through the slot. In fact, they pulled three directors of public prosecutions before someone came up to get them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that was a... Yes, it's the remarkable story of an unnamed customer who tried to use a Barclays cash machine in uh, central London. When he punched in his personal number, a piece of paper slid out bearing the message, Help, we're trapped inside the machine. <laughs> Apparently, uh, two bank tellers had been uh, filling the machine with cash when the doors were accidentally uh, shut on them. It's uh, not clear at what point in the weekend all this occurred, but judging from the fact that there was still money in the machine, it must have been about half past seven on Friday evening. <laughs> Barclays, the bank that likes to say, help, we're trapped inside the cash machine. <laughs> Tony, uh, what's this story behind the headline, strangely reminiscent of the Kate Bush song? And with <laughs> <laughs> No, I, do, I, I, I know this one. I remember reading about this. This was a, a chap who, um, who lost his ear in a fight and the doctors sewed the ear back onto his leg so that uh, uh, the blood supply would, would keep the... Um, the this Paul Gascoigne <laughs> again. No, he didn't. Really. <laughs> Although I remember, I think at the time, that he should have had the... Uh... Oh, yes, here we go. <laughs> he should Where have should he have had the ear, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> As if we couldn't guess. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's a uh, travel tunnel worker, <laughs> uh, Mr. Pat Neary, who lost, lost his left ear in a disco fight, and in an effort to save it, doctors have grafted it onto the upper part of his leg, where it will stay for five months. Surgeons at East Grinstead Hospital supposedly <laughs> broke the news to him by saying, a word in your thigh. <laughs> 
apparently uh, his sex life will be restric restricted over the next five months, but what there is of it will sound great. Uh, Ian, what's uh, BT up to now? 999 call scandal. Apparently British Telecom has been losing calls, and a lot of 999 calls have been diverted to Chinese restaurants and the like. <laughs> yes. So you ring up and say, can I have an ambulance? And they say, what number's that? <laughs> Yes, absolutely right. It's the news that British Telecom are passing 999 calls to police, fire and ambulance services in the wrong areas. Uh, two blazes in Ulster were referred to firemen in North Wales. <laughs> uh, a fire in Huddersfield was passed to Humberside, a Leicester fire to Derby and a Worksop fire to Nottingham. I think by the time they arrived, the fire would have spread that far anyway. <laughs> uh, we phoned a British Telecom spokesman for his reaction and he asked us what topping we wanted on our pizza. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us mercifully to the end of round two, and we see plainly that, uh, well, they're still level. Eight points each, both teams. Well, it's time now to get down and get cryptic, as we uh, show each team a set of seemingly and indeed genuinely unconnected images, but uh, which, taken together, encapsulate a major news story of the week. Ian and Tony, the clues in the music for you. Who's that oh, yeah. Yes, I think this That's, is. Uh, um, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Taking oh, photos of someone unwrapping a condom. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh dear. Someone selling sausages. <laughs> Soap powder. Ooh, oh, I recognise them. A lot of transvestites. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's clearly um, the director of public prosecutions, DPP, which now stands for drop panties, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, yes, good. Presumably, the, the clue in the music is who's that girl? Because mm. the Sun newspaper oh, yes. splashed on Monday that it had found the girl, and it wasn't her at all. It yes. was someone else. It was yes. a completely different girl. Quite what the sausages have got to do. Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> did, did, did Sir Alan use a veiny breakfast? I'm, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think it was more a reference to, uh, to Spanish supermarkets, which is, of course, oh, where they yes. now are. Oh, yes. That's Menorca. right. How can you tell it's Menorca just by showing a sausage? <laughs> well, you weren't supposed to tell on. it was Menorca. You were supposed to have read that in the paper and tell us that it was Menorca. You'll get the hang of the idea <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the series, Tony. Yes, it's, uh, it's Sir Alan Green, uh, one of the most generous, honourable and decent men you could hope to find uh, hanging around King's Cross Station. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's currently in Menorca, being uh, pursued around his local supermarket, hence the sausages, uh, by packs of reporters, uh, hence the film, uh, while the tabloids back home uh, scrambled to identify the prostitute who spoke to him. Uh, the Sun got it completely wrong when they implicated a prostitute called Samantha. The star was quick to mock. Your Daily Star tracked down the real girl, they said, Nicola Evans, only for the Sunday Mirror, to announce the star had got the wrong Nicola. The girl was really Nicola Hall, or as they revealed on Monday, Kathleen Beach. Uh, prostitutes' prices in King's Cross area have now shot up, £25 for a quickie or £50 for the full interview. <laughs> uh, Paul and Alan, a pretty tall story for you. Hmm. Jane. We know this, we know this. I think so. We know the music. It's the music is by uh, Sir Ranulph and the Feathermen. <laughs> yes, absolutely right. It's a, a group. And, and the first one. on the right trail. Yes. So the, the Arctic Explorer. Ralph. He's not the, in the Arctic. No, the bloke towing his lunch across Hansard Heath at the beginning of that, behind his, a firkin of something behind his track. But there is the chicken actually being, as it were, plucked. Well, I think I've answered that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot in the middle of it. Yeah. I, I suppose yeah, a pluck would be Would you like to elaborate at all? <laughs> Not enormously. It's the sort of question where you elaborate on a subject like this and someone's waiting for you outside the studio with a sock full of sand. It's all about, <laughs> all about international murder. It is. It's a rather mind-boggling claim by polar explorer Sir Ranulph Twistleton Wickham Fines. Pronounced uh, Waldergrave. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, he's the sole survivor of a group of SAS men, hence the film, who uh, killed four Arab brothers in the 60s and who consequently have been hunted down and killed one by one. And this was on the orders of the victim's father, who hired an organization called The Clinic. It's taken 17 years, but that's the NHS for you. <laughs> so uh, let's plunge legs akimbo into our now virtually entertaining archive round. 
As usual, one piece of film per team. This week, uh, both taken from the world of popular beat music. Ian and Tony, <laughs> just a second or two to decide who this is <coughs> and what musical instrument he's playing. That's, uh, that's Ron Brown. And it is he's Ron Brown. Playing the mace. Um, <laughs> very badly. <coughs> yes. Mm. And the, the music is guilty. I think a reference to a court case of his involving some knickers and someone else's wife. I think you've got two marks for that. Very good. Uh, the popular beat combo in question was, of course, Banana Rama. Massively successful insofar as they've had 23 chart hits and massively economical insofar as they managed to do it without using any more than one tune. <laughs> This is, uh, in fact, taken from a commercial for the album of Banana Rama's greatest hit. That's not a mace. I'm sorry, it's a giant pepper pot. <laughs> uh, Paul and Alan, more funky vibes for you. Who's the unexpected caller here? We argued just the other night. I thought we'd got it straight. It's, it's Mick Hucknall from Simply <laughs> 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 Who else could it be? Pop connoisseur. Um, or Neil Kinnock, of course. Or Neil Kinnock, yes. Yes, it's uh, slightly younger Neil Kinnock, in fact. Back in the days when he had hair. It'd be difficult to be a slightly older Neil Kinnock. <laughs> <laughs> Just a point to make there, Angus. Yes, I, I think it was worth it. You're not getting any points for it, but uh, well done anyway. Yes, he was appearing in a Tracy Ullman video uh, back in the days when she used to be British. We are So, uh, at the end of that discordant round, well, it's still neck and neck. There's nothing to choose between them. Paul and Alan have 12, Ian and Tony have 12. <laughs> and so we forge lustily into our odd one out round. Four grim visages for you to ponder. Only three have something in common. Paul, a cosy foursome for you. Stormy Norman. Idi Amin, Rain Spencer, Princess Di's wicked stepmother, and the <laughs> lovely Paddy Ashdown. Um, well, three of them I know have been contestants on Blind Date. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them now happily married. <laughs> so it I, worked. I, oh, I think, the only thing I can think of is that um, Paddy Ashdown's the odd one out because the other three have either been portrayed in films by actors or are about to be portrayed. And the Americans have done a soap opera of the royal family where, what's the name appears? 101 Dalmatians, she was in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an extremely good answer, for which I'll give you one point, but it's not actually the right one. Idi Amin is the only one to have bits of the other three in his freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you obviously know something we don't, but uh, it's not Is it the an answer. army question? It is an army question. Is it medals, then, if it's army? Yes. Uh, it's Rain Spencer. Unsurprisingly, as all the others have been decorated, whereas she's simply done a lot of decorating. Oh. Uh, of course, very nearly a joke. As for the others, uh, Paddy Ashdown was decorated in Borneo. Norman Schwarzkopf was decorated and given an honorary knighthood by the Queen for his contribution to global warming. And Idi Amin was awarded the highest accolade the British Empire can bestow, the VC. Unfortunately, however, he awarded it to himself. <laughs> I'm sure he would have given himself a knighthood if he could have trusted anyone to hold the sword. <laughs> uh, Alan, a handsome uh, quartet for you. Frank Boff, Thora Heard, Maradona, and Alicia, the Aga Khan's horse. Uh, <laughs> I think the clue is in the nostrils. Mm. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Three of them are users, and Thora Hertz is a supplier.
boots her business into other people's noses. Yes, yes all of that is very good. No, Paul Hur did come second in the Grand National. <laughs> <laughs> Before you go any further, no, that's not uh, They've all been the decorated. Right what rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's Thora Heard. All the others have been caught red-handed, or in the case of Alicia, uh, red-hooved, having consumed illegal narcotics. Although Thora Heard was once positively tested for Horlicks before songs of praise. <laughs> uh, Maradona was found in possession of cocaine, uh, which he swore he never took. I'm sure it was just the nose of God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Uncle Frank Boff used to like snorting cocaine through a ten-pound note while dressed in red camisole, stockings and suspenders. <laughs> Something which is worth bearing in mind, I think, when you watch him presenting the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Excellent. Very good. Tony, uh, an absurd collection yeah. of misfits for you. Oh dear. Uh, Terry Wogan, Colonel Gaddafi, Princess Margaret and Eddie Grundy. <laughs> Eddie Grundy has something to do with sheep. <laughs> Terry Wogan is wearing a sheep on his head. <laughs> Gaddafi's Prince... cabinet are entirely made up of sheep. <laughs> or, yes, or he thinks he is a sheep because he's mad. And uh, Princess Margaret <laughs> isn't. <laughs> no, I do, no I, do, I do know this uh, because it's... Um, no, I don't. <laughs> Hang on. They've all been on the They've archers. They've all been on the archers, that's right. Except, except Eddie Grundy. No, ex except, except Gaddafi. They've all been on the archers, except Gaddafi. Absolutely right, yeah. yes, at long last. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Two points, very good. It's Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi's in the uh, next series, opening a wine bar. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will be, yes. Terry Wogan played himself. Eddie Grundy is the name of character played by Trevor Harrison. And Princess Margaret played a slightly bloated sherry addict who's rather keen on men. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, she, uh, she actually played herself, not, uh, not that other character at all. Um, Ian, um, four more pillars of the establishment uh, for you. Michael Foote, Sir Alistair. Ah, yes. They Pamela both modelled donkey jackets. Uh, Pamela Bordes and... Derek and that's Jameson. Derek Jameson, pronounced mm. Sid Yobbo. <laughs> Michael Foote edited The Express um, a long time ago, um, before he was... Anything to do with the Labour Party. Sir Alistair Burnett edited The Express, I believe, um, uh, before he went to I, ITN. I, I, yes, well, it, you're right. The first and one, Michael Ford actually edited The Evening the, Standard. The, the, the evening standard, standard. Yeah. right, good. I've got it wrong. That's in mm -hmm. keeping. No, you're not. They're, all editors. They're, They're all, editors. all editors. They're all editors. Yep, yep. Very good. Yes. You're not getting any more points, I'm afraid. You've got, uh, you got it right. Two points. Uh, Michael Foote, Sir Alistair Burnett and Derek Jameson have all been editors of various newspapers, whereas, of course, Pamela Bordes has only had editors of various newspapers. <laughs> which uh, brings us scurrying to the end I of the I think I'd hour. better use the word allegedly <laughs> very loudly before Angus goes personally bankrupt. <laughs> or the BBC, anyway. Yes, uh, which brings us scurrying to the end of this round. Uh, at which point, oh, there's uh, some difference at oh. long last. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Paul and Alan are desperately trying to keep their heads above water with 15, and Ian and Tony are sailing off into the sunset with 18. And so we mince shamelessly into the final round, in which we show each team a set of headlines with one or two words missing. They must identify the words or provide a better alternative. As usual, we force the team in second place to go first, in a vain attempt to give the game some competitive edge. <laughs> uh, so it's down to Paul and Alan. Off you go. Limo is what in his limo? Uh, blotto? <laughs> it's with other three Marx brothers there, eh? Nimo, Blotto and Limo. <laughs> Um, it was nicked. Uh, nicked is, is the yeah, right yes. answer. Very good. Next, police hero strangled crazed. Nimo. <laughs> dog. I think it's dog. dog, is dog. Uh, I'll give you one a point dog. for dog. It's pitbull is the answer. That's not Next. one word. That's, that's, that's two <laughs> words. Pitbull is two words. Um, not on my script, it isn't. Um, <laughs> well, it's two words <laughs> there. Yes, it is. In the actual newspaper headline. <laughs> oh, and another sharpie. two words are sour grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Sour grapes, that's one word, is it? <laughs> Next, the uh, French face fines if they what? The French face fines if they smoke. <laughs> oh, but you see, it's one word, so it could have been if one they go be round the one way roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, next, the man who really has Kinnock's what? Ear. Yeah. Leg. Leg. Oh, yeah, is correct. Yeah. Uh, oh, and finally, yeah. beat riots by what schools told? Closing, I should think. <laughs> <laughs> Decimalisation? Uh... <laughs> Flying flags, I'm afraid, yes. Yeah. Oh. So here we go, Ian oh, and Tony, nice. here are nice. yours. Gaddafi's what droops after his trip <laughs> with Scargill? Sheep, I think. Um, <laughs> Can we answer that one? You can know? leap in if you want to. No, I don't um, know that. Left wing. Left wing is Ooh, absolutely right. Well done. Uh, next, Labour votes. had two wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you do now? Next, Labour votes to change what? Name to change. Conservative Party. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a point for satire. Very good, uh, but not actually right. Britain is the answer. Oh. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, Cock a hoop yeah. Tories are up what? Oh, I know, I know. Is it? Is it? Ship Creek. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that this is down south. It is down south. Very good. Uh, next, herd tiptoes across. What? Tulips. <laughs> uh, two words here, Paul. <laughs> Is channel name? negotiation or something mm, like I'll that? give you one point. EC tightrope is the answer. Uh -huh. And lastly, Thatcher gives them what? Oh, uh, a good seeing through. <laughs> <laughs> a good seeing through with a set of Queen Anne chair legs. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it mad cow disease? <laughs> no, uh, the jitters is the answer. <laughs> which means at the end of that uh, frantic bout of verbal jousting, this week's dismal failures are Ian and Tony with 21. And this week's overnight stars are Paul and Alan <laughs> with 25. <laughs> so congratulations to our winners and derision and public scorn to our losers. Unless, of course, they can redeem themselves in this, our final, final round, the dreaded caption competition. Oops. Paul and Alan, uh, what did you say to <laughs> What did you say <laughs> We, we thought it might be property on the move at last, claims Halifax. <laughs> but or, he's got a better or one. Or possibly National Health Service unveil new plastic hip. <laughs> um, Ian and Tony, what about yours? Uh, Prince Andrew shocked by new look Fergie. <laughs> Fergie, the Queen Mother. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, On which uh, ribald note, we say thank you to our guests, Ian Hislop and Tony Slattery, Paul Merton and Alan Corran, and I leave you with some late news. The people of Blackpool reacted this evening to reports that Mrs Thatcher has finally agreed to speak at the Tory <laughs> conference. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, David Owen gets a rapturous reception at the first conference of the new scaled-down SDP. <laughs> Salman Rushdie at last finds somewhere where no one can reach him. He gets a job in the after sales service department at Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, George Bess has resolved to uh, give up alcohol and start drinking milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. In case you were wondering, tomorrow's guests are Rory McGrath and Tony Banks MP. That's at the same time, 1.35. Next tonight, we meet some folk who believe that experimenting with drugs will help increase their intelligence in bodyguards.